Hi friends, this is Pick Fund Medical Courses. Hope you will be fine. Please subscribe my channel. My motto is medicine should be interesting and funny. Today our topic is Benedict syndrome versus Weber syndrome. Here we go. Benedict syndrome, also called paramedian midbrain syndrome. It occurs due to the occlusion of posterior cerebral artery that will lead to the necrosis of midbrain tissue. In Benedict syndrome, there is involvement of third nerve nucleus retinal nucleus, corticospinal tracts, superior cerebral peduncle, and substantia nigra. Weber syndrome usually occurs due to the occlusion of posterior cerebral artery, and rare causes are brain tumor, brain trauma, infection. The stroke due to the occlusion of posterior cerebral artery will lead to the injury to the midbrain. And there will be involvement of third cranial nerve, corticospinal tract, corticobulbar tract. In, ben in Benedict syndrome, there is involvement of these structures. Edinger westfall nucleus of the third cranial nerve, third cranial nerve, red nucleus, substantia nigra, and corticospinal tracts. In Weber syndrome, these structures are involved. Corticobulbar tracts, corticospinal tracts, and third cranial nerve. So in Benedict syndrome, structures involved are third cranial nerve nucleus, red nucleus, corticospinal tracts, superior cerebral peduncle, and substantia nigra. And in Weber syndrome, structures involved are third cranial nerve, corticospinal tract, corticobulbar tract. In Benedict syndrome, clinical findings will be ipsilateral third nerve palsy due to the involvement of third nerve nucleus. And due to the involvement of red nucleus, there will be contralateral tremor, ataxia, or coriform movements. And there will be contralateral hemiplegia due to the involvement of the corticospinal tract. And there will be contralateral cerebral ataxia due to the involvement of superior cerebral peduncle. Involvement of substantia nigra will lead to the hemichoria and athetosis. And in Weber syndrome, clinical findings are ipsilateral third nerve palsy due to the involvement of third cranial nerve and contralateral crossed hemiplegia due to the involvement of the corticobulbar tract, corticospinal tracts. So this is the mnemonic core I3, contralateral hemiplegia and ipsilateral third nerve palsy in Weber syndrome. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel for latest medical updates, for latest FDA approvals, for WHO guidelines, for colorful medical mnemonics, for USMLE high yield points, for Harrison lectures made easy, for Davidson lectures made easy. Thanks for watching.